just got to I know. I feel like I'm sitting on the floor. And I'm not excited. Ready? Well, hello, everybody. It's 1 o'clock on Thursday, November 5th. I already November. I do call this commission special meeting to order those that we have present are Vice Mayor Luke, myself, Mayor McDowell. We have Commissioner Kerson, Commissioner Emmerich, City Manager, City Attorney, City Clerk, our Recording Secretary, Ms. Ida. We have Deputy Chief Morales. I see you hiding back there and a lot of staff. Welcome everybody. At this time, uh, City Manager, could you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, City Manager. <clears throat> all right. Are we what? I think so. We are recording, right, City Clerk? Just making sure, because, okay. All right, so at this time, um, we do need to get an approval of the agenda. So move. Got a motion on the floor to approve the agenda is presented, and that was made by Vice Mayor, seconded by Commissioner Carison. Anything to that? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and take the vote. And that passed four to zero. All right. Um, Vice Mayor, do we have any public comment? There were none handed in to me. City Clerk, do we have any virtual public comment? No, we do not. Thank you very much. All right, so uh, City Manager, I guess at this time, we'll go ahead and uh, have welcoming our new employees. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Ms. McDade is on her way down, so you can introduce the new employees. Good afternoon, everyone. For the record, Christine McDade, Human Resources Director. My pleasure and honor every month to honor and officially welcome some of our newest team members here at the city. When I call your name, please stand where you are. Today we have three from Neighborhood Development Services. First, we have Alexander Bohorsky, Planner Analyst. Kyle Brain, Plans Examiner Inspector. And last but not least, we have Jeffrey Griffith, Plans Examiner Inspector as well. So on behalf, on behalf of the city, it's my pleasure again to welcome you and wish you the best here in all your endeavors. Thank you. Welcome. welcome, everybody. I hope you have a long, prosperous uh, tenure here with the city and welcome. Um, city Manager, we'll start in with the, oh, I guess we should have that city clerk. With the swearing in? Okay. Yes. City Clerk, I guess this one's yours about the alternative options for swearing in ceremony. Yes. Um, due to COVID, we wanted to um, come up with alternate um, options for swearing um, the new commissioners in and giving recognition to those going out, as well as the refreshments. I did speak with the mayor at one point, and one of the options that she had presented was to do the um, rotating the incoming commissioners swearing in and while the others wait outside and we didn't know if there were any other ideas that anybody else had. Um, and since she mentioned my name, it was just a quick little, you know, maybe we have to do it on a rotation basis, nothing formalized. And I concurred with her that, yeah, this needs to be a discussion item because Chambers is roped off with caution tape most seats. So, <laughs> um, Vice Mayor, go ahead, please. I think a lot of it depends upon how many are going to attend, and I'm not recommending you do RSVP or anything of the sort, but uh, family members come in as a family. They're already in a household together. They're not exposing each other to anything more. I don't have a problem with every other row be roped off so that the friends can sit. I would rather see this room be a little more full uh, to observe this as a public meeting instead of rotating people in as though it's this individualized type thing. 
I would like to see it handled as publicly as possible. So I think if uh, the families and the friends were greeted um, and then seated, I think would help to fill it up, make it a little more public meeting rather than some specialized thing. As far as um, the refreshments and stuff, uh, I believe it's 50 people. I mean, that's how this room is blocked off right now is for 50 people. And I think you can still go ahead with the refreshments, you know, making it 50 people. You might not even have 50 people, but if you have it back in 244, you can have 50 at a time. And as some leave, others can go in. Those are my thoughts. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Commissioner Carson. Yes, I have to agree with the uh, Vice Mayor, I, I think that, you know, when families come together, they are, are more than welcome to sit together. In all the years, uh, all the swearing-ins I've seen, I've never seen this place busting at the seams. So I'm not going to, I mean, it's not going to happen. Uh, and even if so, you can do the same thing with the other room. You can set up chairs outside. I mean, I just don't. And as far as Kate's concerned, I never liked cake at the swearing in at 9 a.m. anyways. So do what you want with that. <laughs> Send them off with a breakfast burrito. I don't care. <laughs> it's too early. You finished me? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Amich, did you want to weigh in? Well, yeah, I, I agree with the cake thing. Maybe coffee and donuts or cookies and coffee or something like that. Um, I'm agreeable with everything setting up this room when we had our swearing and there wasn't too, too many people. And, you know, if 244 is too crowded, we could have it out front too. That's a little bit more open air right out here in the lobby for refreshments and stuff too. So I'm, I'm with whatever the group decides. The only thing that I was, I was thinking too was in 2016, this, this room was packed. Mr. Carasone, this room was packed. There were people standing in the back, um, and there was a lot of people out in the um, hallway area because we had the three new commissioners coming in. Um, so I don't know if maybe we can do it at the Mullen Center, you know, or if there's enough time logistically to set something up at Mullen or Morgan that it gives you a lot more space. Everybody can be there. We have citizens there. We have, you know, the media is going to want to be there. Um, this way then everybody is in the same room. And I would think after almost nine months of COVID, everybody pretty much knows their limitations of vulnerabilities, if they wanna mask up or not. Um, I don't think we need to make that an issue, but um, just to give us a little bit more space so that we are sharing this event, because this is a new commission, it is a new time frame, and I, I just thought maybe Mullen or Morgan might be a good option too. So those are my thoughts. Uh, Vice Mayor, go ahead, please. Uh, I'd rather see it officially done here, you know, and them take their place and everything rather than in some other area. But if you rope off that first row that only holds four on each side and you start opening that second row, there are nine seats. And there aren't too many families that have more than nine. And friends can sit behind the families. You know, you rope the next one off and then the other one opens. I think we'd have, you know, enough for, you know, to accommodate it. City manager, is there a reason that Chambers is still roped off? I thought we were, I mean, restaurants are at 100% capacity, and I don't understand, is is there a reason that Chambers is still roped off? Because it gets really warm in here. No. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I, yeah. I believe it's, I think we're still limited to the 50 people, um, but okay. we can verify that. I don't I know if they ended my head. at November. Yeah, I thought that something. all ended. A, a, even longer than We're that looking because that up. oh i i see scott scott has an answer we have a chief coming down uh, uh, scott titus from fire rescue district um the only thing i can say is i'm not sure why they left them up except for um if you look at cdc guidelines now one of the things they changed over the last couple of weeks was um 
before it was 15 minutes, they consider 15 minutes close proximity within six feet was considered to be an exposure. Um, now they're saying it's cumulative 15 minutes over a 24 hour period. So if we're here for several hours, if people are, I think it's really kind of one of those things in an abundance of caution to make sure that we're, we're doing that. So that would be what my answer to that would be. I agree they're opening restaurants. Um, a lot of that they try and say, I think most of those people, as uh, the vice mayor said earlier, they're in the same household or a lot of times they're already spending that time together. It may not be as much consideration. Whereas here, I think you get a much more heterogeneous group in that. But this ability. is not required by the, go ahead. Because you're probably going to ask the same exact thing. I well, know. the reason the rooms are off to 50 is based on the governor's executive order. It's still in effect? I, I, I don't know. The, I hear it's CDC guidelines, well, he's, but not. What Scott's saying is accurate, but he's speaking to something different. Oh, okay. Because I was. I'm and we can research if you'd like. Or mayor, I, we can I research that the, all the governor's executive order to see if that. Some of the executive orders expired, but they're not all expired. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But even are you looking at me? One at a time, know. guys, 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 one at a time. Let's let Chief finish up. Okay, go ahead, finish just, up. We'll, we'll be happy to research that if you'd like to get back to you all and, and with, with that answer if you'd like. CD, what what the governor's uh, executive order state. That would be, I think, a very important um, tidbit to make sure that we're following. And if if it has expired, then I can move on. We'll know before next week. Okay, thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor, go ahead, please. That To me, that information is great for mm -hmm. after the swearing in, <laughs> but we need to make a decision today as mm -hmm. to what we're gonna do for the swearing in, um, I think, because other, I mean, other than today, we have the meeting on the 10th, four days later is the swearing in. Uh, I think this is an exception to the rule of how it's marked off now or how it will be marked off afterwards because we are talking about family attending. And this is set up for community, for citizens to come in who aren't family. Uh, there might, I don't even know if there's a place for husband and wife to sit beside each other. I think they were separated also, but I feel as though this needs to be an exception in what we find out from the information and set it up for afterwards is fine. But uh, to me, the family needs to be able to come in and sit together and not be strewed all around the room. I agree with that. But we also have um, citizens that are coming. We have staff that are coming. I remember all the directors were there at the swearing in ceremony. So. Um, I, I do recognize we have to be cognizant of the time that <coughs> COVID is not leaving anytime soon. Um, but at the same time, we have to make these accommodations as, as much as we can for this occasion that we have once every two to four years. So um, I don't know if we gave you any insight, city clerk, if you need any formal direction or what exact, because I think I'm seeing we're right back where we started the conversation that maybe just open up some of the seating, but. Yeah, I hope we get a consensus on. so that it's actually the body. Right. Um, yeah, that uh, we open up the seating so that, that family members can sit together with a six foot spread between them. Get a consensus for that. Get a consensus to open up the seating so family can sit together. Um, the vice mayor. Yes. Commissioner Emmerich. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Carson. Yes. And I'm a yes. So what what do we do and with non-family? Well, friends, I think I think family sits together. Friends can sit behind. Whoever came together. Exactly. Exactly. Whoever comes together sits together. Uh, family can be seated together. If you have to limit this room to 50 people, then the directors sit out front. They're, they're not in the room at the time. Uh, if there's space for them, so be it. If there's not, so be it. This is uh, the charter offices, officers, and this time of um, swearing in to me is number one. Thank you. As much as we love our directors, no offense. If you're sitting in the hallway for this event, please don't be offended for that. Um, do we need to give consensus on that about the directors? And maybe even in that back little area there, 
think all you got to do is say prioritize the residents and the exactly the people coming in first, family and, and friends yeah. of of the commissioners. And the the other thing is about the cake. We, yeah, we got to get that. We don't. I mean, send them off with. I don't know. Thanks. I, I'm all not right, sure. So let's. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Please go. I like the coffee and donuts idea. Yeah, I do too. I, maybe we have you. Well, I was thinking egg McMuffins. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking Dunkin' Donuts because they're cheap by the dozen. <laughs> and I'm all for supporting local. But uh, we'll let city clerk. So let's get a consensus to do coffee, orange juice, and donuts for instead of cake. Uh, I'm a yes. Commissioner Carrison. Yes. Uh, Vice Mayor. Yeah, I'm fine. And I too, I'm fine with that. Coffee, orange juice, donuts. Custard cream, by the way, is my favorite. Just kind of. Apple fritters. <laughs> non fattening. <laughs> Pumpkin cake. All right. Um, City Clerk, is that enough direction for you? Are you yes, it is. clear? Everything good? Yes. All right. So now we will move on to the next order of business. City Manager is the discussion and possible action regarding the acting city manager compensation. Mayor, is it possible to do the one after that first? I'm sorry? Possible to do the other one first? The, the interim city manager to the next item, now? And yes. And then we'll, we'll talk about We'll have to get a motion afterwards. since we've already approved the I'll agenda. Move to, uh, to hear items 4C before 4B. Second. Motion on the floor to hear um, the interim city manager hiring process before the compensation for the acting city manager at the request of our city manager. That was made by Vice Mayor, seconded by Commissioner Carasone. Anything to that? No, ma'am. City manager, did you want to speak to the change? Nope, we'll go ahead and take the vote then. And that passed four to zero. All right, city manager, let's have the discussion about interim city manager hiring process. I'd like to, um, as you know, this came about at about 1.30 in the morning um, last Tuesday. I know I was exhausted. I would imagine the rest of you were. And due to the fact of that hour and everything, we didn't get quite everything we needed to move forward. There was a, a lot of back and forth, and, and I can tell you I wasn't clear, and I know that my staff wasn't clear either on what to do. As you said, you know, move forward with finding an interim city manager, um, get applications at the same time, and that's just, that whole process would be just a natural disaster. And we already have one of those coming towards us, so we'd try to avoid having another. Um, I would recommend, I mean, and you, I think we appointed um, Ms. Belia as the acting city manager for a month, which in essence will be for two weeks because you also kept me on for the first half of that time period. Um, I don't think we put a time period on it. I think it was just acting city manager. There was no time period. It, it was very odd the whole way it went. I would recommend that if we can just clarify exactly what it is you guys wanted, whether you wanted Ms. Belia, whether you wanted to um, have one of the assistant city managers become the interim city manager. Um, doing a process to hire an interim city manager at the same time as doing a process to hire a city manager would be time consuming, costly, and, and just difficult. Um, you, obviously, the city manager reports to you all. We have two assistant city managers in-house. Um, if you wanted to make one of them, I know that there was also some discussion about other people as well. But I'd really like if we could just get some clarification on, because I know some of the people that heard heard a time frame and some did not. So there's a lot of confusion. So if the commission wants to talk about it, um, since the city manager reports to you all, that'd be wonderful. So we could have some clarification. I don't but, believe the time, since I made the motion, I'm pretty sure that uh, there was no time frame in that motion, correct? Okay. Thirteenth until there was an interim appointed. Correct. So there is absolutely no time frame there. So. So the question is, do we find an interim? Uh, at the same time, we're trying to find a actual city manager, or you appoint an interim. We appoint an interim tonight. Gotcha. All right, uh, Vice Mayor, go ahead, please. Uh, I remembered the motion the same way too. There wasn't a time frame on it, but um, there might have been some of the confusion because it was discussed having 
the new commission choose the interim. Uh, I cannot um, pick anybody from within the city to be the interim city manager. Uh, there's a healing process that needs to go on. Uh, so I cannot appoint not even an assistant city manager as an interim, uh, let alone a director from another department. Uh, so I don't see a problem. I mean, I don't see on here where there's a discussion of how to seek a city manager. I only see a discussion as to seek an interim city manager. Uh, so we didn't even give direction for that uh, the other evening too. So I believe we're gonna have to get a motion toward that. The interim city manager does not have to be as large of a search as what the, the full-fledged city manager would be. Uh, Florida League of Cities and some of the other, probably ICMA probably have um, retired city managers that would fill in for a short amount of time. Uh, so I think there, we could gather applications, not necessarily doing a search. I believe a search is necessary for the full-fledged city manager, but gaining applications and looking at the entities or the organizations that have city managers that are credentialed uh, could be done rather quickly. Um, because it's just a simple application process. And then the, on the 24th or after, whenever needs to come forward, um, the choice would then be of the new board as to who they would work with as the interim, while the search was going nationwide for a city manager. So that is my comments on that. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Commissioner Carousel. So the reason why I had suggested Ms. Belie is because she had done it in the past and our assistant city managers are just way overloaded with what they already have on their rolling agenda. I, and there's just no way. Um, and Ms. Belie has plenty of people underneath her who uh, can step up for what would be deemed a month to two months uh, yes, we've worked with, I mean, this is my, let me tell you, this is, I think, my fifth city manager I've gone through, just to be clear. So, well, you've been um, here 16 years. 12. Uh, but, you know, the problem, the eight problem eight. is, oh, 12, yes. yeah, the problem is, is that um, if you go through ICMA or the Florida League of Cities, that takes a while. It doesn't take just a few days. It actually takes anywhere from 30 to 60 days because we tried that uh, several times. Um, we do have, I had suggested um, Chief Lewis, uh, Terry Lewis, Mr. Um, the interim city manager slash county administrator for all things South County or Sarasota County as someone uh, who would be, I mean, I would be interested in, in saying would be a fantastic interim because he knows the city, he knows the departments, he knows how things work here. Um, as far as the process for a true city manager, I think you, I mean, everybody made that clear that it should be left up to the new commission. So I wouldn't even be willing to discuss that. So it's really about just either saying, and I personally thought that that was going to be a conversation about the interim city manager as well, which was why we knew we needed someone who was going to be the temporary appointed city manager. Um, and that's why we discussed uh, Ms. Belia. Uh, it was a 3-2 vote. I don't like going back and trying to change things that already went through. And I think that uh, that vote was clear. <coughs> She has the in, uh, the uh, acting city manager position, and that when the new commission comes on, they can discuss the interim as well as the city manager appointment because that's how I understood it. So, did you weigh in, Commissioner Emmerich? I'm sorry. 
Punk oh, I thought so you were trying to get clarification. I'm so sorry. Stuff. No, that my apologies on that. Commissioner Armrich, I didn't see your light on. Did you want to speak to that? Um, or do you want? I, I think down the road, I, I agree that when we discuss the interim, that should be the new board that comes on. I would much rather discuss that. Now, going outside of the city is is an option, but staying within the city is an option as well, because if you look at the pay scales and everything, you're just going to be adding more money and in pay on an interim rather than just putting somebody up that's that's in the city already. So I'm, I'm looking at those angles as well, because it could be a cost savings to do an interim in-house and then move forward with the search for the city manager. So I'm, I'm holding on to that till the next conversation with the new board. Uh, where we're at right now with Ms. Belia as um, the acting, yes, it was voted on, it was agreed upon, and I think we should move forward on that in a, on a temporary basis because that's what we discussed, a month to two months until we figured out where the interim was going. And again, we're going to decide that with the new board. So I, I, I think we're where we're at right now, in my opinion. And that's all I got. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, just to weigh in on the interim city manager discussion and hiring practice. Um, we have assistant city managers who are extremely well versed on what is happening in our city. In these next few months, we have a lot of big ticket items coming up. The ULDC, the uh, West Village's de-annexation. We have the 7-Eleven um, mediation. We have everything in between that they are extremely well versed on. To get an interim city manager from outside who is not familiar with these extremely pressing topics, to catch them up to speed is not doing our city any service. Um, City manager hired our two assistant city managers. He has confidence in them. As a matter of fact, the city manager even recommended assistant city manager Yarborough to be the acting when he was going to take his vacation, and he was the acting city manager. Um, I have no problem with what he did during that, what, six weeks or so. Um, to get a new, and I, I agreed with having the new commission do the interim city manager decision. But, but time is a good uh, way to think things through, especially when you're getting to that 1 a.m., 2 a.m. point. An interim city manager should be somebody here at the city because they are familiar with what's going on. Um, you're talking about an interim or are you talking about an acting? I said an interim. Okay, because I thought the interim city manager would be a discussion for the new board. Be a choice. And yes. I, I'm speaking about. Okay, I just want to make sure we're not having that conversation tonight. Because we already had this conversation, and God knows we don't want to be here till 2 a.m. again. Just making sure. Are you done? I don't know. Are you? Because we've heard this before. That's the point. Okay, and Commissioner Carison, this is my floor to speak about a discussion item that is discussion and possible action. And I am sharing where I am coming from with an interim city manager. That's what we're discussing. And I am stating my position like each of you have had the opportunity to do. So thank you for letting me continue. Or do you want to finish up your thoughts and I'll wait for you? Oh, no. Please hurry up. Go. If we are going to hire somebody outside the city to be the interim city manager, we have to make sure that they are caught up to speed. And our assistant city managers and our directors, it, it just seems silly to hire an interim city manager outside of the city and expect our staff, who are versed in these topics that are coming up, to have to then explain to them where we are in the process. It, it just, it, it doesn't make any logical sense to me. And I, I, I would like to focus on keeping a stability in the city. We have the new commission coming on board. We have 
all of these things coming up that need discussion for this new commission to have to hire an interim city manager and then months later hire a city manager it's not being stable it, it's not creating this cohesiveness that needs to be done to keep the city running efficiently and effectively and those are the two keywords efficiently and effectively outsiders don't know the day-to-day -day operations of the city like our assistant city managers do so commissioner carison i was I just don't understand why we're having this conversation. Who put this on? Was this you, city they manager? Need, okay. Because we need, already had this for two hours. They need direction on how to go about hiring an interim city manager, and that's what we're discussing. And yet again, that was discussed that the new finalized. commission would. So then I'll make well, a motion. Are are we are we? It was actually with this discussion what I'm hearing is put off uh, any hiring process for the interim until the new commission comes on board that that's that's what that's I'm how hearing. I understood it um, I mean I don't during the meeting there was also discussion that we have HR work and bring in some applications so that the new commission can appoint an interim city manager at the end of November that was I don't that. that was discussed by me, and it was never put into. A it was motion. never and exactly why this agenda item was created, correct? Because and we so, never gave formal direction. Though I like what I discussed, I am willing to uh, wait until the new board is on here for them to select the process or however they want to go about it. That's kind of what we're looking for. Is we don't want to sit back and do nothing while we wait because the first. I mean, I get they're getting sworn in next Saturday, but the first meeting is realistically the 24th. Um, and that is three, almost four weeks from the time when we last had this conversation. And the last thing that we want to do is be sitting around for four weeks and have you all say, well, don't you have a list of applicants? And if we that that's one of the things we're looking for clarification on is if we're supposed to be waiting, then we'll wait. But if you want us to actually be bringing in the applications, then we need to get something out. Thank you, City Manager. Commissioner Emmerich? Yeah, the one thing that I was looking at, too, you never know in that in, in, at, at that night because somebody here may be put into that interim position at that night, and that just stalls the whole process of going forward. We don't know how the new board's going to act on that. So you may have somebody appointed that night, and that cancels out anything that we were to suggest today on how to go forward. So I would just rather wait and maybe get that input that evening, and then we may just be going forward on a city manager. I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but it's a possibility. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing with any of that. I mean, you know, this is your position and your process. We're trying to make sure we're doing what you all want. Right. So that's the only reason we're asking for clarification. Ready for a motion? I'll make one. I thought you made a motion and got a second. Well, she made a statement. I seconded it. Uh, Go ahead with your motion. Let's be. Oh, let's make it clear for city clerk. I'm sorry. Before you make your motion, Commissioner Carison, did no, you want to speak I, to? I hit it by accident. There it is. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Vice Mayor, with your motion. Move to approve delaying the hiring process for an interim city manager until after the new commission is seated. Second. Motion on the floor to delay the hiring process for an interim city manager until the new commission is seated. That was made by Vice Mayor, seconded by Commissioner Emmerich. Anything to that, Vice Mayor? Uh, everything we've discussed, I'm fine with. Thank you. Anything to that, Commissioner Emmerich? No, nothing further. Commissioner Carson, did you want to speak? Nope. <clears throat> Mayor. I'm sorry, go ahead. So I'm clear on this, because, or actually, so whoever is going to be up here on the 24th is clear on this. I just want to make sure they're going to bring you back an agenda item on the 24th to discuss the hiring process for an interim city manager. Correct. It's going to just get an amendment to and have it on the agenda. Well, that, that, that I have no issue with. I am just want to make sure that you know that it's going to, that's what you're going to have. And then you all are going to talk for however long you talk and decide how to do that. 
correct. at 6 p.m. for a brand new commission. And I won't be here. <laughs> if you're going to put it it's on. better than the. Uh, That'll cut the time. I would half. rather, uh, you know, I, I like to know that. Otherwise, I would be submitting it for the 24th. No, we'll have so. it on for the 24th. Okay, thank you. Okay, it's so. no worse than the comprehensive plan amendment. I, 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 I get it. I was there for that one. <laughs> Um, all right, so seeing no other comments, we'll go ahead and take a vote. And that passed four to four to zero. <laughs> four to one. <laughs> four to zero. No, <laughs> All right, city manager, next item is the compensation for acting city manager. Um, so the last few times that we've had an interim city manager, um, typically an interim, or an act. An interim. Thank you. Um, mm. because once I'm gone, that's what you'll have. <laughs> so we're, um, somebody has to be in this position. So I can tell you back in 2017, when you all appointed me, um, to be the interim city manager, we brought you an agenda item just like this one discussing what the pay for that position would be. In 2010, the same thing happened. Um, at that point, the police chief was made the interim city manager. So since you all set the salary for that position, that's why this item is on here. Um, I can tell you in 2017, the salary range was brought forward from when from the range that was created when they brought Mr. Lewis in for negotiations, which was, I believe it was 140 was the minimum of it, and it went up to, I want to say, 175 or something like that. But most of the times when we bring somebody into an interim management assignment, um, I can tell you, outside of a charter position, an interim management assignment is brought up, is actually the salary is set by the city manager. <laughs> um, but it's not lower than the minimum of a pay grade. Since the city manager's position does not have an official pay grade, the 140 was taken from the negotiated rates um, back in 2011. So that's why this has a number in there, the same 140,000 that was used when you all made me the, in the agenda, it was actually March of 2017. So this is for you all to have a conversation on how you want to pay this person. Thank you, city manager. Commissioner Carson. I could have sworn there was a policy in place that there was an out of title pay it's oh. x amount percentage there is there are two policies in our personnel policy one is an out of title pay and one is an interim management assignment it depends on the position the interim management assignment is for directors and division managers the out of title pay is for everybody else neither of them apply to this position um, because this is everything about this is set by the commission um, that's why, um, like I said, I had the agenda item back in 2017. What is the, what is the two of them? The one, the out of title pay is what, a 15% increase or something like that? 5% pay increase or the minimum of the pay range um, and takes effect on day 11. The interim management assignment, the salary is set by the city manager um, and takes effect the day it goes, the person gets into the position. I get it. Well, it seems to me like what was suggested by, this was a suggestion by the HR department, correct? The, I asked them to put forward the, basically the same item that I put forward to you back in 2017. Right, okay. Which is just pretty much, um, was it 30 something thousand over a two month period or something like that? Really good question. Yeah. I gotta find it now because I'm on the wrong agenda. Um, if it was based on three months, yeah, the pay would be a thirty-five thousand dollar adjustment um, total. Everything in would be forty-five thousand after you got payroll taxes and everything in there. And that's if it lasts for three months. And again, this is just acting because if if the new commission, let's just say they choose to appoint her or, you know, as interim, then that's a whole different ballgame. That's a negotiation and all that, right? That's up to you all. I can tell you that when they did it, when you all made me the interim, mm -hmm. 
this is what you were brought forward as an agenda item. It's one of the backup items on here, your second attachment. It was just an agenda item, and we all agreed. I, oh, okay. I presented the agenda item, told you where I got the salary range from, and um, I think only two of you that are on here were here that night. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's where we went. Okay. That makes sense. Actually, there was only one here because I was out sick that meeting. And I wasn't voted in yet. <laughs> so, there, yeah. so I, okay, 2011 one, there was a few before that, and I swear it was at a title pay, but um, it's all right. <clears throat> I'm done. Commissioner, uh, Vice Mayor Luke. Uh, we're talking about an acting, not an interim. Mm -hmm. And everything that was brought to us is describing an interim getting a higher pay. Acting generally is not an increase. Uh, Mr. Yarborough did a fantastic job the two months filling in as acting. He had no pay increase whatsoever for those two months. Uh, his contract states that he's supposed to do that. He doesn't have a contract. Well, his position is job description. Uh, same as deputy clerk. We've had the deputy clerk step in for the clerk, and while they were acting, there wasn't a pay increase, but when they went into interim... Well, when it's been it for was, an extended period of time, there has been a pay increase. It went, it went back retro to be paid. Uh, so I cannot uh, support an increase for an acting pos position. Uh, it's not the interim. Um, Y'all know how I voted the other night. I don't see how Ms. Belia respect her for the position that she's in, but she doesn't have the qualifications in order to be an acting city manager. Um, Mr. Yarborough is up to snuff on everything that's going on of everything that's around, and he is supposed to be stepping up in an acting position. So to give a higher compensation to an acting position, I cannot go with that. Thank you. Commissioner Emmerich? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. City Manager, did you want to speak to that before we move on? Every other position, every non-charter position in the city would have gotten a pay increase. Absolutely. And I, my, my opinion is what happened with Mr. Yarbrough actually was not correct, that he should have gotten a pay increase because he was given additional duties, additional responsibility. And you have two assistant city managers. Either one of them could have been brought up to do it, but only one was, and only one was given the change in duties and assignments and no change in compensation for it. So I, I disagree actually with what was done, but I wasn't here at the time to give you that advice. Um, and any other position in the city that's not a charter position, had they been in that for that amount of time, they would have gotten it immediately, according to our personnel policy. Whether you call them acting or interim, doesn't matter. But we may need to address what was done wrongfully toward him then. Mm -hmm. I tried that. That I agree I... with. That can be done. Go retroactive for his right. two months. Thank you for that. Um, Commissioner Emmerich, no, I just cleared up a most of the questions that I had, so. Thank you. Commissioner Carrison. Yeah, I, I tried to address that that night, but was told blatantly by the majority that that was in his job duty and that was what he was required to do. And I have to tell you, none of these job duties that exist, we can't find anywhere where they were approved by the commission. And those job duties are supposed to be approved by the commission. So um, I don't know how valid those job duties actually are. That's number one. Uh, if we went backwards in retro for those interims and those who are acting and then appoint an interim, then it would be wise to say the same that they actually got it from the beginning because it's retro, which means you go backwards to when they started. It makes no sense why you wouldn't just put this in place now instead of having to go backwards and fix what was broken, uh, which was a huge travesty. 
um, in the past to Mr. Yarborough and still should be fixed uh, personally. And um, just do what's right. Uh, I think that we keep talking about Mr. Yarborough stepping <coughs> up and being the uh, acting city manager. He's got enough trying to get that ULDC back. Uh, you know, we, we've we got assistant managers that are up to their ears in, in things that have been on the books for years and years, but yet not being accomplished. So I think that... Um, I think we need to just do what's right in this case and do the do what it is that's been suggested and, and be done with it. Um, you already know how I voted um, about acting city manager, um, Ms. Balea, nothing against Ms. Balea. I have absolutely no qualms with Ms. Balea being a director. We have a ICMA certified assistant city manager who stepped up once before. I know that he could step up again. That is why I voted against it. Um, it was stated uh, two weeks ago and again tonight that uh, Ms. Balea was the acting city manager. City Manager, could you please tell me when exactly she was formally appointed as the city man, acting city manager or an interim city manager, whatever title followed by city manager that Ms. Julia was formally placed under? She wasn't. Formally, she's never been appointed the acting city manager. Over her career, she's had, um, back when we were a significantly smaller organization, a day here, a day there, maybe a week or so, she and I discussed this. Um, never formally appointed as an acting or interim city manager. So I have to wonder if based on that statement, that 3-2 vote was based on um, not accurate information. Um, because I do remember Commissioner Hank saying, well, she did it before. Um, and she hasn't. It wasn't a position other than maybe a day or two or three or four. A week. A week, five. Okay. This is going to be for months. And, and there's far greater things that happen for at least a month compared to a few days. Um, if she is to get an increase... It, it, it can't be this amount. She's, I have, I'm trying to choose my words very carefully because I don't want to negate everything that Ms. Balea has done, but she doesn't have the qualifications, folks. It's the bottom line to be the city manager, to warrant a $35,000 increase. Even though it, it pains me that the other staff are catching her up to speed. They're not getting compensated, but they're the ones that are already doing the work. What other staff is catching them up to speed? Well, I'm sure the city manager and assistants are, are well, doing we know that. The city manager, but the assistant city manager. I'm sure that up. others are definitely. Yeah, for a fact, did someone tell you this? Well, I took a statement that you made as fact, but it found out later. No, it wasn't. it's a fact. She was appointed as acting city manager, and at the time, it would be appointed by the city manager, not the commission. So you are correct. The commission did not appoint her. The current city manager at that time would have. Ms. And that's exactly Jason, what I, I said. Finish my oh, mate, stop I, interrupting. I'm me, just please. wondering who it is that staff talked to you specifically and said that other people are coming in asking them to train them. That's what you said. City manager, if Ms. Balea doesn't have the qualifications to be the city manager, and it's been stated that she has not been the city manager except for no more than a week, how, how would that... Is, the 5%, you had mentioned something about 5% on day 11 of out-of-title pay for any other staffers. If we were to use that 
and make it just be on day one because yes, she does have the, the higher responsibilities as opposed to the, the where did this 35,000 come from? Just off of his, he already said it, this. It's the difference between making 140 and what she currently makes over a three month period. Okay, but where did 140 come from? 140 came from the salary range that was used to negotiate the city manager back in 2011. Okay, so that was to be a city manager, not to be an acting. There's a there's a huge difference. Yes, ma'am, but the reason that we use those numbers is because that's the best we have for what's considered an established pay range. And if I were to bring in, I'll just use a different position. If, you know, hold on. If our finance director was vacant and I was to bring in a, somebody to be the finance director on an acting or interim basis, I would bring them to the minimum of that pay range or a 5% pay increase, whichever is more. Um, and in this case, um, we don't have an established pay range for a city manager. So we use that range as the established pay range um, and bring in somebody like Ms. Balia up to the minimum of that established pay range. That is all unclear as I could try to make it. But the, okay, and I think this might be where the difference is, is the minimum, I think, the minimum is based on, the, the, the one in 2011 was to start um, Mr. Lewis and contract. That 140,000 was for Mr. Lewis to become the contracted city manager. Yours was the interim position to fill in the void and give you a six month think about it time frame to determine, yes, I want to be the city manager or no, put me back in finance. Well, at the, when we established 140, that we hadn't gotten to the, any conversations of me even being it permanently. It was just to get to um, what you pay somebody to be the interim role. The okay. six-month thing came back later in late May. Okay. Um, speaking of the other part that I see on here is a car allowance of $600,000. Uh, $600. Is that a month or is that for the whole time frame? The $600 is monthly. Okay. I, I have a problem with giving a $600 car allowance to an acting city manager when we have pool vehicles that can be used, the month of November and December are holidays. There's no conferences that are going to. All the work that's going to be needing to be done is right here in Sarasota County. And we can. Uh, why are we d even discussing a car allowance? Because they, when this was put together, it was just taking stuff out of what's currently in my contract. <clears throat> you could take it out. Well, I mean, you'd obviously have to get the per talk to the person, whoever, in this case, Ms. Balia. Um, but I'm sure that she could use a pool vehicle as well. Um, but that's what I read. Pardon? I thought that was in the backup, something about a pool vehicle being used. Well, it says here the illustration purposes is for three months of $35,000 and a car allowance of 600 Right, which is 200 a month, not $600 no, it's, a it's, month. It's, I understand it's, what he said. But it's 600 a month. That's what it says on the... 600 a month? Yep, the last line on the second paragraph in the background information says plus the currently budgeted amount of $600 per month for the use of a personal vehicle to attend city business. Is that possibly a mistake or not? I assisted HR with the financial impact for this, so the numbers came from me, so that's why they're probably wondering. Uh, the reason I only put one month of the car allowances in there, this, this 45000 is the estimated impact to the general fund for a three-month acting period. And that is because we have our current city manager that will be paying the salary per the separation agreement. And then we're taking someone out of another fund and paying them in the general fund. So that means we're, yeah. the, the 45000 is my estimate of the full impact to the general fund, not the difference mm -hmm. between what she makes in road and drainage and what she makes in the general fund. It's 100% because we don't have that, her funded in the general fund. And road and drainage is a separate entity anyway, so you yes, can't really yes. look at it that So way. I only put 600 because my understanding is we'd only be paying the current city manager for one month of car allowances current month, but then we'd be paying the acting after that. Yeah, I was just trying to look up so that thing. means we've already budgeted those later months for a car allowance for a city manager in the general fund. 
the manager, does HR have an answer for that? The, her change in pay, if you went to the 140, would be about a 9.4% pay increase over what she's making now. Again, that's to bring to the minimum of the pay range. Um, there's the 140, like I said, I told you where I got it from, um, which was the range done in 2011. There are lots of ranges out there that we could look up. You can go on, um, go online while we're sitting here. It could be 136 something. It's, it's an estimate. Across the board. Um, but that's obviously the commission choice right now. Of what do you want to make that number? I personally agree with Mayor McDowell. I think you should just stick with the five percent out of out of classification kind of deal, and it's it's not nine percent. You know, but I, it's up to. I me. can uh, agree with Commissioner Carazon's statement. That would be a compromise to pull me into this rather than sitting completely on the outside. But I would also like to see Assistant City Manager Yarborough compensated fully from what yeah, he was making at that time that'd be to this a conversation exactly. after. Um, the other thing is, is we have to take into consideration that it's not just Miss Julie that's getting a increase. But Miss Monica is getting a increase because she is assuming the duties of public works. The, we're going back to this is many different departments that are being impacted by this. If we, and I, I'll say it again, if we just keep Miss Julie in her position as the director of public works and let assistant city manager do their job. Again, this was voted on. I understand it it's with. voted on, but I am also saying that it's not just Miss Julie's salary that is being impacted, and that's the point that I am trying to make. So at this time, uh, Commissioner Armitch, go ahead. The floor is yours. Yeah, I got since that was just brought up, I do have a question because if we are going to. Um, pay Julie more and Monica more, how many more underneath that are going to be moving up, you know, and, and out of title pay? You know, is anybody going to be taking over Monica's position? And then therefore, therefore, are we paying like two people out of title pay or are we paying five, six, seven, eight down the line? So, I mean, that needs to be discussed as well. Actually, it doesn't need to be discussed. That's not a commission decision. It is if we make a decision to. You guys make, make the decision of what happens with the city manager. The city manager makes a decision of the rest of the positions of what he needs to, or she needs to run the city. Which I understand, but that's the general question. Um, I, I, and it's one I can't answer, but I can tell you that if you move Mr. Yarbrough to the city manager position, he's probably going to promote somebody to the assistant city manager, and that's 100% his call. And then whoever he moves there is probably going to be replaced. It will snowball the whole way down. Either way we go. Mm -hmm. Potentially. So what happens when they go back to when, okay, let's say the. the you want to go back to when you appointed me to the interim? I appointed somebody to be the interim finance director. Okay. So since this is a temporary, the acting is a temporary position. Mm -hmm. So Miss, Miss Julie is no longer acting city manager. Miss Monica is no longer acting director of public works and whatever the snowball down the. What happens then? Do they keep that increase in salary or do they revert back to? When they go back to their old position, they go back to their old pay. Wanted that on the record, thank you. <laughs> oh, and just, just for um, respect, I would like to recognize um, commission elect Ms. Langdon in the house. Thank you for joining us. Um, I don't know when you came. I apologize if you've been sitting there for a long time, but. Welcome. <laughs> um, uh, Vice Mayor, you have your light on. Uh, yes, uh, I'm in the compromise mode with what Commissioner Carazone was stating, uh, that 5%. Uh, but I would put that 5% on day one, which would be um, November 14th, would be her first official day, as his is 
the 13th, his last, so making it a 5% increase of her current salary on day one when she takes over as acting city manager. Is that a motion? I, I'll second it I if move, it is. Okay. <laughs> I, I move to give an increase to Julie Belia when she takes over as acting city manager on November 14th with a 5% salary increase. On day one. Yeah. Yes, on day November one. November 14th. Yes. Second. Motion on the floor to give Miss Belia when she becomes acting city manager on November 14th, that first day there, a 5% salary increase. That was made by uh, Vice Mayor, seconded by uh, Commissioner Carrison. Anything to that? No, ma'am. Commissioner Carrison. Nope. Um, seeing no other lights on, we'll go ahead and take that vote. And that passed four to zero. Um, I'm going to pass the gavel. I make a motion that no car allowance be um, paid to acting city manager Balia during her time as acting city manager. There is a motion on the floor to not um, permit the car allowance to be given to acting city manager during the duration of her service. Is there a second to that? I'll second that. Yeah. Okay. Not needed. I'd, right, that's what she's making the motion for. No, like it wasn't part of the... I don't think you need need a motion to not do something because you made a motion of what to set the salary at and it didn't include a car allowance. I'm just making crystal clear there's no car allowance. That's why I made the motion as I did. But, you know, I don't think that it's necessary, but okay. Well, not only that, they should have mileage and travel per diem just like any other employee. So is there going to be a conflict with the word car allowance to No, ma'am, because she would millage, be entitled to mileage. reimbursement. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can't take that away. It's in the backup material. It was discussed in the backup material as part of her employment compensation, and that is why I made the motion as I did that there's no car allowance, just to make sure things are nice and clean. That's the only reason. Okay, there is a motion on the floor to not permit the car allowance of $600 to acting city manager during the length of her service. Made by mayor, seconded by vice mayor. Anything to that? All right, uh, Commissioner Emmerich? Um, oh. Voting. Okay. We'll go ahead and take the, the vote. And that passed four to zero. Gavel going back that just clarified the thank you motion. Thank you. Somebody want to make a motion uh, or I will. pass it back about. I would. I would like to make a motion that we compensate Assistant City Yarborough for the time of his service that he filled in as acting city manager. Uh, comparing his salary at that point in time to the hundred and forty thousand dollar figure. Second. Thank you. Got a motion on the floor to um, back pay Assistant City Manager Yarborough for his time as Acting City Manager. Um, to the $140,000 mark that was made by Vice Mayor, seconded by Commissioner uh, Carrison. As long as that is not less than what he, or less than what he makes now. I just want to make sure. Of, okay. <laughs> yeah, you're getting a, you're getting a raise. Not really, just kidding. <laughs> um, anything to that, uh, Vice Mayor? Yeah. Uh, Today is his anniversary day, and his pay only went to 126000 okay. today. So it was undoubtedly under the 120000 mark. Uh, he served 
approximately two months. So I believe um, he deserves that comp compensation. I appreciated the, the job that he did, and it's only fair and right. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Carson. I, I hate to say I told you so, but I asked for it then. So <laughs> it's only common sense. City manager, before I can vote on this, I have to ask a couple of clarifying questions. Um, according to the sheet, uh, assistant city manager makes about $126,200, give or take. Um, and that was effective today. No, effective, yeah, today. today. What was his salary when he served as acting city manager? About 5% less than that. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure, Assistant City Manager Yarborough yeah. knows exactly what his salary was. It was one twenty one three sixty five ninety two. One twenty one three sixty five. Okay. No wait. I apologize. It's not correct. It was one nineteen five seventy two thirty four. Thank you. That's what I. One nineteen. Five seventy two thirty four. Figured it was just under the. Okay. Mark. And this is. Salary only, not benefits. So I have to ask. He just, city manager, one more time. Is this hundred and nineteen thousand dollars? Is this just his salary, or is it his salary and benefits? Just his salary. Thank you. I thought you were talking about the one forty. Forget it. This hundred and forty thousand dollars far exceeds the 5% we just gave to acting city manager Julie. And I, I, I need to understand why are we going to the 140 for assistant city manager Yarborough, but going to the 5% for Miss Julie. I'll, I'll explain why I did. I would like because uh, the position of, of the director going in, not having the credentials, I did not see where paying that so that compromise of the 5% of the position that she's currently in, uh, that is what they do. So that was a compromise I could agree to. Acting city manager by assistant city manager Yarborough doing it, he has the credentials, that is his job description duties, and it should have been right and fair that that low mark of the 140 been viewed at that point in time as Commissioner Carazone says, she stated, I'll take part of that blame definitely from that night. Um, somebody could have kicked me because I believe I'm one who went toward you don't get, you know, an increase while you're uh, acting. So I'll take um, blame and fault toward that. But I think it's only fair that that 140 mark um, be looked at for him in the position and the credentials that he carries. Thank you for that explanation. That's what I needed to hear to get a full understanding. And I, I too thought that when you are part of your job description says you have to fill in for the people that you're assisting, um, that that is just a given as to what the salary is. And obviously if it's a long-term thing, like an interim position is a long-term, then that's where a salary increase gets changed. So um, I, I never heard of an acting because to me that's just what an assistant does. So I, I too was misinformed and I appreciate that. Um, so thank you for the explanation on why the 140 for assistant city manager. Um, seeing no... Yeah, I'm up there. Oh, I'm sorry, there you are. Go ahead. Yeah, I had the same ideas as you did. We did the 5% for Julie. I, I don't disagree that he needs to be compensated, but apples are apples, and they're both doing the same job. They're both being the acting city manager, and I won't support that. I think it, they both need to be either 5% or both brought up to the 140, so that's the reason why I won't support it. That's all I got. And just to rebut that, the only difference is for me, because I was not going to support any increase because Ms. Julie is not qualified as, an, as a city manager. 
she does not have those qualifications like assistant city manager does. So um, I can support this and thank you. I'm just gonna rebut that and saying, um, assistant city manager didn't have to put up with nearly the crap that Ms. Belia is putting up with within prior to her being appointed. So maybe she should get the 140. I don't know. I don't know what crap she's putting up with. We're having discussion here. Continuously being told that you're not qualified is crap because she is qualified, probably more qualified than people sitting up here. Go ahead and call the question, please. And that passed three to one with uh, Commissioner Emmerich dissenting. If you want to go ahead and state your reasons for dissension. I stated them already, apples to apples. I just, I just wanted to give you the opportunity, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so now we will move on to public comment. Um, we'll do it again just in case there's any at the end of the proclamations. But just for kicks and giggles, do we have any public comment that has come in? Uh, I have not received any. Um, seeing that we still have some time, I don't know, do you guys want to do the commission communications and administrative reports? Yes, I would like to do it now rather than later. Commissioner Armitage, now or later? Doesn't matter to me. Now is fine. Commissioner Harrison? Yeah, now is good. Go ahead. Um, Commissioner Armitage, we'll start with you then. I don't really have any. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Commissioner, Commissioner Harrison. Uh, just a quick question, City <coughs> Manager. Uh, the point set of parade, I saw that the route was reversed and it now ends on um, Appomattox versus Dallas White, and I'm wondering why, because I know that we did that one year and it turned into a cluster. Uh, it was an absolute disaster. People had nowhere to park. People couldn't get back to their cars. Um, and I can't remember which parade it was that we did the reversal, but it, it was a nightmare. And so then we went back to starting on Appomattox, ending at Dallas White, and it was fine. So I don't understand why we're doing it this way again when it was a cluster the first time. For the record, Parks and Recreation Director Sandy Funheller, um, I'm not recalling that there was a cluster with that setup. Um, I know we did it once, and then we we did it a different way, and then we again changed to. Uh, City Hall, City Hall mm -hmm. um, because we were expanding. Mm -hmm. um, part of the parking issues uh, with Dallas White Park were always that the event was growing. It was getting too big for that location, which is why we moved it. The reason it was moved back to Northport Boulevard is because we are trying to put on this large event in a time when the pandemic is still going on. Uh, while we know that um, capacity limits have been lifted, there are still guidelines out there for physical distancing um, and um, not gathering large crowds of people together. So this event traditionally attracts thousands of people. Moving it to Northport Boulevard gives us a little more control over how many people come to the route um, than it would, say, if we kept it here at City Hall. Reversing it the other way, we are trying to avoid having a mass gathering at Dallas White Park if the parade ends there. Um, we just do not want thousands of people to come to that park and be together when we have the pandemic uh, still happening. This was a discussion that happened in our incident command meetings, and it was something that um, Parks and Recreation, Public Works, Fire, Police, um, Risk, all the departments together were working to come up with the best solution in order to have the event. Most communities around us have canceled all of their holiday events. So this is our attempt at still having the parade, doing it in a safe manner, um, and uh, having space for people to come if they choose so, or watching virtually um, as well. So I, if you don't mind, Commissioner Carison. By all means, go ahead. City Manager, I really think um, if you could explain what's going on with the poinsettia parade only because I don't think a lot of citizens have gotten the memo yet 
Um, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody really knows that there had been some changes made. So to kind of fill in the blanks for the citizens, if you could help us out, please. <laughs> you don't want to do that? Nope. So it's on the same day. Uh, it is nope. every year, uh, which is the um, first Saturday of December. Uh, it's at 5 p.m., which was a commission directive for that start time. Uh, it will start. Um, it'll be staged in Dallas White Park, so that's what we'll be using the park for. Uh, and then it will uh, follow from there down Northport Boulevard to Appomattox, which is where it will end. Uh, there will be a disembark location at the Jockey Club area uh, for people that are on their, um, if they have to get off the float and get into a vehicle in order to leave, or if they have to meet up with someone um, to get a ride home after the parade is done. So they would turn left at Northport Boulevard in Appomattox and go down past the Canine Club to the overflow, um, we call them overflow lots in the Jockey Club area. It's a big open grassy area. Uh, we've already put out the parade application. Uh, I believe we've had three or four um, that have already come in for this. Uh, we already have a presenting sponsor again, which is Quality TV. Uh, we have a, also have a gold sponsor. Uh, we are taking parade units that are um, mobile. Uh, there was a decision through the incident command um, committee that there would not be walking units. Uh, so uh, it's, it'll be a parade similar to what it was before, but just trying to take those precautions that we think are necessary at this point for everybody's health and safety. I just have one question if I can just one you up here. Why wouldn't you think you wouldn't have a uh, conglomeration of people on the other way, going the other way yeah, when, they, you will. when they offload? I mean, you're going to have it either way. How is it going to be more spacious when you're on Appomattox offloading all these floats down there instead of at the park? We don't want the, there to be um, the thought of having a festival at the park after the event. And that has happened before. That's what people are used to, is having a festival after the event. So we're trying to not have that. And the park is a natural gathering place for something like that. So the thought was, we turn the route around. The parade ends at Appomattox. It doesn't go past there. The only reason that people would be going to the left is if they need to disembark. And since we have all mobile units, most units will probably be able to turn right and leave. There won't be any disembark that will be needed at this, at this break. Right, but you're worried about having a festival. Because... Is your microphone on? Oh. If, if, you're, if you're worried about having a festival and we're not having a festival, you're just disembarking there. So who would be putting on a festival? if this is the city of Northport's parade. We're, we're not putting on a festival. That's what I'm it's, saying. You're it's not. The, mm -hmm. It's the public that comes and gathers at the event. They would stay. Yeah. They wouldn't leave. They'd go there and create their own festival. Which they're going to do at the empty lots anyways. But we don't need to be encouraging it or making it the, a natural thought. If it's at a park and everybody ends there, they're going to get off their floats and they're going to stay. If they're on Appomattox, they're not going to get off their floats and stay on the side of the road. They're bet me. Bet you would be less. It will be less. And that's well, the idea. I, in the same token, I don't think you're going to have a whole lot of participants. And not with the requirements of not walking, not throwing out anything, you know, that it's limited, that it's backwards, that there's no festival. I think it's going to be very minimal, if any. City manager, there was also in the memo that we received a thing that said, viewing participants will be limited. Mm -hmm. What does that mean and how does that work? So we will be marking Northport Boulevard um, to be physically distanced, like we did at some of the other events where we had, um, at the concert, we had the circles with six foot distance in between. We're gonna mark Northport Boulevard that way. We're asking the public to cooperate with that. We are not going to stand there and police okay. it. I don't have the staff. Um, that, not a police function. Um, so it's really just, we're, again, we're trying to offer this event. We don't want to cancel it like everybody else has, but we are cognizant that there are health and safety guidelines that still need to be followed. Well, I think you should have police and I think you should pay a special event permit. Because <laughs> I'm sick of doing it. <laughs> Bye. Uh, can I ask a couple questions? Go ahead. 
Miss Sandy, where will the parade start? Technically at the corner of Northport Boulevard and Greenwood. Because that gathering place, when you block the road off, there's lots of people stand in that. Yes, that and that, that has been discussed at the ICS meetings and a plan has been put in place to prevent that. Okay, are you gonna be doing the circles and stuff in that area on the road and everything too? Um, I'm not sure that there'll be access there at this point. Okay. If, if there is an area where there's access to view, we will do the circles. Okay, all right, thank you. I got one more. I, go ahead, I'll, I'll see if I can remember it, go ahead. No, this is not a difficult one. But when If you do Mine disembark on Appomattox, do you have enough area out there for people to park to where once they get done with their floats, they can just go over there and leave rather than having to come all the way back down to Dallas White Park? Because when it used to end at Dallas White Park, people parked at Winn-Dixie and they walked across the bridge and everybody was out of there. Do you have a plan for that it, at the Appomattox end? So... When they get to the Appomattox, they're going to turn left if they need to have a disembarkment. If it's just, if it's somebody, there's four people in a vehicle that's decorated and they don't need to get out of the vehicle and they're done, they're going to turn right and they're going to leave the area. If they turn left, they're going to go down past the Canine Club to the <clears throat> open um, grass areas in the Jockey Club that we've used before. They're going to pull in there and there's parking there to meet if they need to be picked up or if they need to disembark and get into another vehicle. Okay, just as long as the participants know that because it needs to be as, you know, yeah, get so out of be, here friendly that will be as staffed. possible. Just as before, that'll be staffed and we'll have BSAs there. Okay. That's all I had. Thank you. So if you're worried about a festival-like atmosphere after the parade, What's to say there isn't going to be a festival atmosphere before the parade when everybody's gathering to wait for the parade to start? I can't control that. I, but I'm, I'm not trying to set up the park in a position to where it would be open to do that. We're, we're trying to avoid that. We're doing the best that we can to offer this event. And do you know when the communications team might be getting word out about... <coughs> these new changes so families can start I know it's it's a month away yes but it so the families can start planning it's, accordingly it's already been out yeah, it's already been put out um, we do it. a uh, a mailing to all of the um, yes. immediate neighbors to let them know because there will be road closures um, so that is is occurring probably in the next week and that has a lot of that information on it um, as far as the event and the times and the closures um, so all, all the standard op options that we've used before and the avenues for marketing, we are still doing. All right. Great discussion. Thank you. One more Thank question. You, you said road Thank you. closures, plural. How many? Appomattox just Appomattox and, and Greenwood, right? Um, I, I don't have it in front of me, so I don't want to. I'm sorry, in Northport Boulevard. Yeah, I don't want to quote it, but. Um, right. We're, okay. We're, yeah, I, well, that, that's something that we do at the incident command meetings, and the police has um, uh, made suggestions on how that'll work, so um, to be the safest route possible. Because my concern is they have that, is it race? Is it race terrorists that's if, right if there? There's a, are you talking about a road where there's only one access point? Right, um, right. We, the police are aware of those, and they will let people in and out as, as it's safe to do so. Um, but then again, that's why we put out the information to all the neighbors. We send a direct mail letting them know. And if they have a question or an issue, they'll let us know before the event. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Right. Commissioner Carson, did you have any other communi communications? No, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor. Uh, I've got a couple of things. I had a discussion with city manager. Well, I have two things that I want to discuss with about cameras. I had a discussion with city manager, and he said there are some blind spots in city hall. Uh, I think just first floor, wasn't it? Where yes, ma'am. The hallway coming in. There, as, there's a, a handful of them. Yeah. Okay. Hold. 
Do we talk? Yeah, I was just. That's right. I was just gonna, there's a handful of them. Let's not put them out there. <laughs> right, but I would like to see that come forward uh, in order to make sure all areas in City Hall are covered with cameras. Wasn't that part? I'm sorry. Wasn't that part of that? That safety thing. St that safety oh, thing so that got it? next? No. It's, I thought it got next. No, it was not in this year's budget. It was in last okay. year's budget. We can fix that. The security of all buildings within. Yeah, yeah. Not just City Hall, but all buildings. Yeah. Certainly bring something forward. I, I'd hate to quote you a price on what it would be because I'm not a camera person um, and making sure that it fits into our system. But there's, yes, there's a handful um, without specific, going into specifics. So everybody knows, hey, go here to do stuff, bad stuff. Um, there are a handful of spots, and I can make sure that IT and everybody works on getting that fixed. Okay. Bring you home, bring Would, you forward with the. I mean, if it's an amount that we need to adjust the budget for, we'll let you know. Okay. If it's not, we'll just get it fixed. Okay. And the second area is the girls' softball field. Uh, there has been some activity. Uh, they broke into the concession stand and did damage, and just last or Tuesday, just. Not too long ago, within the last day, there two was weeks. a bunch of people sitting there. We were like, "What are they doing? Like having an election party in the dark?" It well, was weird. That was the last week, I believe it was. It was before. Yeah, it was okay. before Tuesday. Uh, but there, there's an. I mean, that girls' softball field needs to have some cameras address that too. There's some activity that goes on in the back, uh, where there's no cameras at. There's and a bunch of lights. Yeah. It is until so we so yeah. through the through that process. <laughs> but soon and then it's ours. But Miss um, Sandy, for the record, Sandy Von Heller, Parks and Recreation Director. Uh, there are no cameras right now that are planned for Naramore Park. Um, we did reach out to IT just to ask kind of a ballpark. Uh, could be anywhere from six to ten thousand dollars depending on what's needed in order to put cameras in there. Um, the issue in the back, um, it's kind of that back access road. Um, it's not really a parking lot. There's a couple spots there, but it's a back access road um, to the building all the way um, that backs up to the neighborhood. On there more? You mean? Off in, off in there more, all the way in Behind the back. Behind the ball field. There's like a storage um, area. Yeah, down yeah, there. okay, yeah. So on that access road there, um, there is an issue with the lighting back there. Um, that is a um, Sarasota County function. Uh, that work order has been in for quite some time to get that light um, replaced. Uh, we've also asked facilities um, to look into adding an additional light fixture that, um, at that location. Um, they have not been successful in, in getting another drop from F FPL is my understanding. Um, so we're looking at alternate solutions to get something else back there. Okay. Uh, I would just like to know that the commission supports, you know, them bringing something forward to address the lighting and the cameras at the girls' softball field. So as you look into those things, I'd like to see it brought back to the commission if you need money allocated for it or that because I know it wasn't budgeted this year Correct. so if there needs to be something if you would please bring that back can I have a consensus with the board yes. for that to bring back cameras for Naramore Park uh, bring back uh, if they security need, measures security period. measures perfect for the girls softball field uh, if they can't handle it in their budget they bring it forward for they us deem it for necessary exactly. yeah Wait. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> I I'm agreement. Absolutely, yeah. But there's no. something about. I don't know if it's about this. I, I don't know. Good. Okay. All right. So security measures for the softball fields at Naramore Park. Um, if a budget amendment is needed. They bring it forward. And uh, you were yes, Commissioner Carrison, Commissioner Emmerich. They said yes. Yeah, but wouldn't even wouldn't we look into this after the MRs? So wouldn't this possibly even go into the next budget cycle? The the light is the county's, the cameras ours. Right. 
So they're already trying to get the. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, I'm fine with that. And I'm also yes. Thank and you. can I just add to that that even though the lights are the counties, there may be a way that you fix it yourself and bill the county. City manager, maybe you can look into that since it seems to be a deterrent to have the light working, um, especially in light of what just recently happened. Um, find out if they would prefer us just to fix it and build them or okay. if they'll fix it soon enough. Safety and security. Especially after the recent break in. Um, it, I, on that same, same lines, if the softball fields don't have cameras, does Naramore Park soccer fields have cameras? No, there are no cameras at, at that location right now. Mm. But Glen Allen School, don't they have some cameras that go that I, way? I'm yeah, sure they Glen do. Allen yeah. Does. But do they reach far enough into the. Not all the way, no. Especially their concession stand area. That's where, I mean, a field is a field, I get that, but the concession stand area. So maybe. We, we can look at the whole the park as a whole. Because maybe it'll be cheaper if you're putting in two cameras at the softball fields, maybe adding two cameras at the soccer fields, you know, at the same time, because you're, I, I, I don't know, I'm just throwing it out there. Do we need to add the, soft, the, the soccer fields as part of the consensus? How about if we bring you options for both and, and combined? I'll borrow that. Sounds good. Vice Mayor, anything else? Uh, the Florida League of City Committees, I sit on utility, natural resource and public works. Uh, we finalized our, <laughs> they finalized it, I disagreed with them, <laughs> imagine that. Uh, water quality mandate is what uh, they're, they've chosen as their, what they want to fight for. If Florida League of City changed, we used to go after two, now we can only uh, formulate one legislative priority. So it's going to be water quality. Myself, um, this is going to be a tough year for anything financially. So I didn't want to send anything forward as a priority if it had anything to do with finances. Uh, so I was after that tree preemption that we have so much issues with and there's lawsuits going on all, all over, but wanted to make you aware that water quality, again, was the priority for that committee. Uh, an update on the CARES through the county. There's been 3,794 applications. Uh, almost $28 million has, uh, million dollars has been approved and $18 million has been paid out at this point. Got a long way to go. We have a very long way to go. And Where if they don't spend what they have allocated to them in this batch, they don't get the next batch. Mm -hmm. So that county's got a whole lot. And I would encourage anybody, if you know individuals, families who have suffered through this, they have increased it from $5,000 to $10,000 the county has. So... This is for individuals also, not just businesses. And then an update with the EDC. Um, I mean, COVID's been going on, but this last quarter of 2020, from July to September, has seen a boom in the area. Uh, there's five new expansion projects, um, 19 retention expansion projects to date. Uh, this is totaling uh, 516 total potential new jobs and over 104 million potential in capital investment. Uh, also, if you notice on the, the tax um, trim notices went out, there was a questionnaire about the business survey. They got almost 2,500 responses from businesses, so that was very successful this year also. And that's the updates of my committees. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just have uh, one item that I'd like to chat about. Um, we got a memo regarding the bridge rehabilitation and repair. Uh, that memo um, 
we had approved as commission during budget process to have them um, for a project at Cranberry and Snover. That was going to be the next bridge that was for rehab. Uh, this memo says, hey, we have to shift it from Cranberry and Snover over to Northport Boulevard and Cocoa Plum. Um, I, I appreciated the memo to let us know, but I think that there should be the formal process, even though if it's on a consent agenda item, that this be approved formally because we formally approved the initial project instead of switching it mid-gears with staff's um, recommendation to move it to the Northport Boulevard and Cocoa Plum. And I, I, I am grateful that they found that the Cocoa Plum needed to be fixed first, but if we approve the budget through a budget formal process, I really think that these kind of changes should also be done through a formal process versus a memo. So I was hoping to maybe get a consensus to just have the city manager from this point forward, anytime that there's a project, especially a CIP project, that has been approved one way and then staff says, hey, we got to change it another way that it comes back as a formal approval process too. I think this was supposed to be iterated when we did our meeting about Tropicare and it not being done that we had budgeted for something something changed and then we weren't told about it until the last minute during budget so i think that i thought that it was clear that anything that was voted on would have to come back for either a budget amendment or a budget shift in project i mean it always did before so is there a different process that maybe I'm not knowing or? Yeah, all budgeted to, to repair a bridge. Yes. A it, bridge, but it had a, a. It had a, a name on it. We have not always even put the names on there. For a long time, all we had on there was like a sidewalk repair program and we would fix, um, we have very competent professional staff that would fix the sidewalks that need to be fixed the most, um, which yes. is what we're doing now. We and. Back in April, when we first started the budget process, we said, hey, this is the bridge we want to fix. Thing changed Seven right. months later, things changed. That's things fine. change. So we notified you all that, you know, hey, this bridge is worse. So we sent you all a memo, make sure that you're noticed that yes, we're still fixing a bridge. Yes, it's still the same dollar amount, it just happens to be a different one. So that when we get to the budget process next year and we say, hey, this bridge needs to be fixed, you're not saying, but we approved that one last year. So we've notified you all. Um, that makes sense. And so, and so, so you're and saying also that so we the don't budget, slow the process up. So the budget approved is just for a bridge fix. It doesn't what you voted on is not necessarily that it was that bridge. It said which bridge in the project sheet. I'm not saying that it didn't say that. I'm saying that you know staff used their professional judgment and said we can either fix we can fix that bridge and do exactly what was in there, or we used the professional judgment and notified you all that said. Hey, we've got one that's worse because the only alternative is to, oh, we're going to have to bring you a budget amendment because they both need to be done. This one's worse, so we're doing the worst one first. But I guess I'm with I'm with the mayor on this one. If it was actually something that was voting on, voted on, so for instance, we'll take the sidewalk for a perfect example. Back in the day, we did three miles of sidewalk. It was had to be X radius from a, from a school. Boom, done. They made the choice, right? Yep. But it seems like we approved that specific project by vote. So if that's the case, then yeah, it needs to come back. But if it's just bridge project, and then they make the presentation, this is what we are presuming to be done. If, if you all want the change made, we can make no? a change. It's just going to make things take longer. Well, I, I understand. Mm -hmm. What, the way I see it is that they had made a maintenance program. And so there was a list of, you know, one, two, three, four priority type list. And in that um, budget, they were telling us, well, okay, we're on this bridge now. Uh, this is the one in our priority list to do. They didn't really need to tell us it was that bridge because there's this priority list of what they go through. 
that this is an emergency. You know, they have found that this bridge in the priority list needs to come above the bridge that we said yes to in the budget. So I understand that this is a maintenance. Uh, it, it's not an outright brand new bridge where we approved a brand new bridge to go in. It's a replacement because it's maintenance. So I see, I don't have an issue with the memo stating, hey, this one was far worse than this other one and we need to do this one before this one. I don't have a problem with it. If it were a brand new item, oh yeah. I'd be pitching a fit that it would ne would need to come before us, but because it's maintenance and the priority has changed because this one is so much worse, I view it more as an emergency. City manager, we have a list of priorities that are deficient bridges that are in, hey, we have to do this one next. We have to do this one next. This one can wait because it's maintenance. And I'm just using that as a term. If where is it on that list, this cocoa, plum, and snover versus, I'm sorry, the cranberry and snover versus Northport Boulevard and cocoa plum? Because if cocoa plum and Northport Boulevard is so deficient, why were we even repairing cranberry and snover to begin with if something was so deficient? They're all equally they deficient. Both, they yeah, all. I mean, ready? Go ahead. Thank you. The, more than one needs to be repaired. It's kind of like if you have four tires on your car and they're all below the standard treadwear rating, but one has steel belts poking through, and you said, nope, last one I changed was in the back right corner, so I'm going to do that one. And then all of a sudden you get to the shop and the guy says, no, the one in the front left corner is worse. You're going to take the one with steel belts hanging out or are you going to do the one that, nope, it is the plan. That's what we're going to stick with. So There's no flexibility in your plan. So both of these bridges need are repairs. equally deficient. No, didn't say that. I said that they both need repairs. One needs repairs worse than the other. Okay, so we so we went and reevaluated, and the one that we're now suggesting that be repaired is worse than the one that we originally planned to. And then it goes back to then it needs to be coming back to us for approval because and it's not you, a maintenance thing like you were. No, it is a maintenance saying. thing. Yes. <laughs> repairs are a maintenance. Yeah. And the one thing I can't stress enough is if you want all these things to keep coming back to you, then you have to understand things are going to take longer because in order to bring things back to you, the entire procurement process will stop while we wait for you all to say yes or no. Because I can't put something out to get bid on while I'm waiting for you guys to say yes or no. But so it's, so you know, in, okay, you're so going to start saying, well, why do these projects take so long? This is why. Commissioner Pearson. So maybe it's about, because I see both sides, maybe it's about the presentation at budget time that you present the amount that you need for whatever project it is, but these are our priorities, and that understand while we intend to do this one, know that when we get in there, when we get deep in there, this could change. And maybe that's all that needs to be done. And that's what we used to do. Yeah. Right. And then the commission said, nope, we want the we want the sidewalks you're replacing. And those are the ones you're well, sticking to. Not this commission. No, the one right before you. I was going to say, oh, hell no. <laughs> and it was, nope, we want no flexibility. Yeah, no, and there's got to be flexibility. So then all of a sudden it's like, all right, well. Hmm? So, and I, I understand that if something, if, if plans change, from Snover to Cocoa Plum, I get that things change, but we approved one not knowing, if you've missed this memo, if you missed this memo, come next year when we go to approve budget and Snover's back on there, then it goes, wait a minute, we approved Snover last year, what the heck happened to Snover? And we'll say we sent you a memo, you should have read it. <laughs> That note, that note is put with I mean, I, I, I can't yeah. solve the fact that people aren't going to read what I send them. And if I put it on an agenda item and you're absent from that meeting, you're going to say the same thing. But we have a new commission coming on, too. Mm -hmm. And if they go and compare last year's budget to this year's budget, I don't know if they will. I, I don't know. And they but may have missed the meeting in between, too, because we could have changed it last meeting and they never would have known either, and they'd do the same thing. 
It's, it's there is a, no perfect way to fix this. I just a note goes on the budget stating that we had prepared last year this bridge and blah blah blah. You and just note it. Way for us is to not name the bridge or the streets that we're fixing. So we're going to put the amount of money in there. That worked really well that's for a long time think. until we got a commission that said that's, exactly that's not what we want you to do anymore. Yeah, but I think too when you're saying, hey, we're going to approve a sidewalk project, and then the citizens say, well, what sidewalk project are we going to be doing this year? And we don't know. And we can send it to you when it because and actually you do know. Yeah. Because when we go to put the contract out, it will say in the yeah. contract which streets or sidewalks we're doing. But that's a contract time, not budget time. That it, 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 I it see, changes just like in this scenario. I I see how all of this plays together. I just. I believe that if we approve one CIP and it changes to another thing, that we should approve it also, even if it's just on consent. That's all I'm saying. And, and I, I just wanted to have the conversation to see what the will of the board was, keep it the status quo, if we want to change it, or just let it go. I just wanted to have this conversation, because we can't have these conversations outside of here. That's all. And Mayor, so, I agree with you wholeheartedly. If it's based off of a vote, yes. That's why I think that the best way to do this is to change it back to the way we used to do it. Yep. These are the priority bridges. This is how much we need. Because you don't know. Sometimes you can do a partnership with another entity to get that bridge done prior to the one you thought would be able to be done first. And you say, wait a minute, we could save millions if we do it this way. And so things come up, and and I get it. So I I just wanted I to have the conversation. And, so. It's a good conversation. Mm -hmm. so I would like to see that at anything that is maintaining uh, anything that deals with the with the city, uh, the sidewalks, yeah, you know, the Lighting. roads, the buildings, you know, the bridges, all that sort of stuff. Uh, if it's something new, if it's a new project, then yes, that's totally different. But if it's just upkeeping, maintaining, uh, I don't think we have to know every single detail. Something might fly all over the building and you're planning on painting a different building, but now you've got you know, a building a mess. Well, you switch the paint job to that building. So it, to me, the repair and the maintenance are just that they're not a new project or budget item. That's all I have. Um, I, I wanted to talk about FLC and what our land use commission uh, committee had approved for our legislative priority, but I left it on my desk. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I we don't meet till next week. Yeah, we had we had approved one, and the next week we approved the language and critique the language. Oh, okay. Because we had ours like over a month ago, our first Last one, month. and yeah, then we, we have another one that's coming up Thursday that we had, and I one in between. I we didn't have one, um, not that I know of. Uh, the one we had initially was to go through the overview, yep. and then this this time was to pick one of those, and oh, we already did that. We did that, so. Okay. Well, we did that in our first one. Gotcha. And um, what I did ask them to do is to um, add the critical infrastructure for uh, high-speed internet in, uh, as just a talking point in our priority, because as Vice Mayor said, you can only have one this year. Um, and... Uh, We'll see what happens on the next meeting because there was, just a heads up, a member who was talking about limiting public participation in meetings, and th there's no way it's lawful, but, you know, let them figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I had, so we'll move on to um, administrative reports. City clerk, we'll start with you. Have one. Nothing? Thank you. City Attorney? Nothing, ma'am. City Manager. Thanks. Okay. So at this time, we will go ahead and recess. It's 2 40. We'll see you in an hour and 10. City Manager. I have 2 50.
personal safety for my family, I will not ride out a storm again. I will not take that chance. Um, if I see it coming up the Gulf towards our city, uh, my family's gonna get out. Getting home is unbelievable. So thankful to be home, that my family is safe, to be back here where this, this simple creature comforts are back at home to have those things back and normal meals. Unbelievable what we saw there, the loss that we saw there and destruction.
Give me the high sign. Ready? Well, good afternoon, everybody. We're back to our special meeting. It is 4 o'clock. Uh, those that are present are still the same as earlier, but just for the sake, it's uh, Vice Mayor Luke, myself, Mayor McDowell, Commissioner Carazone, Commissioner Emmerich, City Manager, City Attorney, City Clerk, our Recording Secretary, Ms. Ida. So at this time, we're at the point of the meeting where we do our recognitions and our proclamations. So we'll go on down below and uh, start reading away. <laughs> Hello. All right. Uh, anybody for GIS? Yes. Thank you. You need that many when you're doing dealing with this. I know. Whereas Geography Awareness Week is November 15th through the 21st, 2020, and whereas National Geographic Information System, or GIS Day, is November 18th, 2020, and whereas GIS is an important part of geography awareness, and whereas the City of Northport is committed to expanding geographic information services to the general public in order to showcase real-world applications with GIS. Now, therefore, we, the City Commission of the City of North Port, Florida, do hereby proclaim November 15th through the 21st, 2020, as National Geographic Information System Day, and we urge all systems to participate in GIS Day activities. Thank you. I just want to say that... Uh, I look forward to the opportunity. Um, November 18th is going to be our uh, City of Northport virtual display. It's going to be a little bit different this year, but appreciate the opportunity and could make it happen without all the other departments. So thank you. Um, yeah, the virtual display is basically going to be two parts. It's going to be a short interview between myself and the GIS users from the other departments. And then we're going to have like a general city um, application that's going to be available to everybody on the 18th. Basically, that's going to allow you to kind of sneak peek into our world as far as what we do, what, we, what we're able to do, and how we use data, third party, and city of North Ports. Um, basically, it's going to be pushed through our uh, social media, and then it's also going to be on the city of North Port uh, page. There's going to be a dedicated page to it as well. Um, I'm working with uh, Michael Fear from Public Works. So everything's going to be covered as far as how everyone can get to it. So, thank you. Remember the days when you could like shake hands and yeah, give hugs? What's this world come to, huh? Well, this is a good one for me since I make every man's health ill. <laughs> Whereas the health and well-being of men is an important subject that is often not discussed in the greater context of national and international health. <laughs> Are you all coming for men's health? <gasps> Yay! Why? Awesome! 
You all make them ill too. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> I thought this was just a joke. Like, <laughs> here, you do it. <laughs> okay. So, whereas the city and well being of men is an important subject that is often not discussed in the greater context of national and international health, and whereas despite the advances in medical technology and research, when men continue to live an average of five years less than women because you can't handle it. Uh, with African-American men having the lowest life expectancy, which is horrible. And whereas prostate cancer is the number one cancer among men in the U.S., over 170,000 men are diagnosed with prostate cancer each year, and about 30,000 men die of prostate cancer each year. And whereas by communicating with and educating the public and healthcare providers about the importance of a healthy lifestyle, and their early de detection <laughs> of male health problems can result in the reduction of rates of mortality from diseases. And whereas men that are educated about the importance of prevention health will be more likely to participate in health screenings, and fathers who maintain a healthy lifestyle are role models for their children, and often have happier and healthier children. And whereas residents of the city of Northport are encouraged to recognize the significance of a healthy lifestyle supplemented by regular exercise and medical checkups. And now, therefore, we, the City Commission of the City of Northport, Florida, do hereby proclaim the month of November as Men's Health Awareness Month in the city of Northport and urge all residents to take preventative health measures and pursue early detection efforts to not only lengthen life, but impact the greater community. Thank you. Oftentimes, bringing awareness to men's health is overshadowed by other health campaigns so on behalf of the City of, Pum city of uh, Northport Human Resources, I'd like to thank the City of Northport Wellness Committee for utilizing yesterday's Wellness Open House as an opportunity to bring men's health to light by giving away can coolers and goodies. Joining me today from the committee, we have Valerie, Sandra, and Donnie. And we also have our fabulous HR crew here. And I asked uh, some of the guys to come up uh, Chief, I think part of the uh, November uh, uh, effort is to the No Shave November. So again, it was just kind of exciting. We, I know we concentrate and focus on different health and wellness topics, and we thought it was a good, good opportunity to focus on men. So thank you, everyone. And we do have some koozies left over. Do we have any veterans in the house besides Mr. Lear? Come on down here. Any veterans wish to be recognized? Ms. Heather? Yeah. Come on. Any veterans? Come on down. Veterans. It's your time. Veteran, veteran. Be bashful. <laughs> Whereas the men and women who have served in the armed forces of the United States have made major contributions towards the preservation of the freedom of this nation and her people, and whereas the services performed by these millions of gallant Americans have demonstrated the willingness of our nation to meet the challenge of those forces wishing to subjugate individual determination through armed conflict. And whereas the Congress designated the 11th day of November of each year as Veterans Day, the day we recognize the important contributions of our citizens whose military service has 
had a profound effect on history. And whereas Veterans Day offers the nation an opportunity, opportunity to rededicate ourselves to Abraham Lincoln's call to Congress and the American people to care for him who shall have borne the battle and for his widow and his orphan. And whereas the nation and the free world are eternally grateful for the contributions of American veterans, men and women, to the advancement of the cause of an honorable world peace. Now therefore we, the City Commission of the City of Northport, Florida, do hereby proclaim Wednesday, November 11th, 2020, as Veterans Day, and ask that the day be observed with appropriate ceremonies in honor of those who have served to preserve the principles of justice, freedom, and democracy. Thank you. <laughs> All righty. So now is the time where we do our recognition um, certificates. Uh, Miss Lori Pucci, I don't see her here. So this is a certificate of appreciation for Miss Laura Pucci in recognition of her personal commitment and dedication to the city of Northport while serving on the Art Advisory Board from September 27th, 2016 through October 9th, 2020. And Morgan Scott. In recognition of your personal commitment and dedication to the City of Northport while serving on the Northport Youth Council from November 26th, 2019 through September 1st, 2020. So we will go ahead and get those out in the mail to them. Thank you. Yay. Thank you for your service. All righty. And I guess we have something here for economic development. <coughs> City manager, do you want to present it to them? or? Okay. That was a quick... So anybody with economic development or the um, CDAP board, anybody that might be here for that? So we'll wait until they get up here. This certificate is from the International Economic Development Council and it's for the 2020 International Economic Development Council Bronze Award presented to the Economic Development Corporation of Sarasota County and the City of Northport in recognition for the Sarasota County Familiarization Tour special event. Congratulations. Speaking to the crowd here, all the people who probably know what this is about because we talked about it enough, but this plaque, thank you, Debbie, uh, this plaque represents a lot of hard work, and it also um, represents a distinct partnership between the EDC of Sarasota County and the City of Northport. We've worked really hard to work together and in unison. Um, that's hard to do. Sometimes you get one foot in front of another, uh, not appropriately. But this work has been designed to help promote our area, and in particular this year, not just the county, but um, we've brought uh, um, market information to bear on what the city of Northport represents its future to be. We used as our backdrop some things that you would find familiar, the Brave, the new Brave Stadium at Cool Today. We used West Villages slash Welland Park as part of that back backdrop. And we've been able to demonstrate that we are a class act right here in Northport. Um, when you put people the caliber of which we brought to town, these were venture capitalists, they were industrial um, people at the top of their game, professionals who are in site selection, who help other businesses decide to come to a place to relocate a business. When they see what they saw here on February the 28th, I believe, they were wowed and they were amazed at the quality of life we have and that it is mixed with the ability to do business and to raise your children in quality of life experience as well. Um, needless to say, we have a workforce that's stunning, and they met those people, they interacted with those people, and they saw the possibility. 
that goes back, it's seeded in their communities. And in this particular case, it's New York and out of Washington and out of California and Canada. So we had people who went back and talked about us and continue to talk about us. So this is a big deal and the fact that we won the, this bronze award speaks to the fact that all of these folks were supportive of that endeavor. Pete in the beginning who saw the possibility, we appreciate that city manager. This group of people who represents our um, community and economic development advisory board, they were supportive and helpful absolutely across the board. You folks over here who supported us by coming to these events, who spoke to these people, and everybody out in the audience, because we pitch what you do. I mean, the bottom line is the city is nothing if it's not for the people who work in it and the work that they do. So we, we couldn't do it without you. Um, the EDC is as pleased as we are, obviously, and we are sort of floating on this. It's an international award, folks, and we did a really good job. We were up against uh, over 200 other um, entries for this across the board internationally. So Sandra, and I wish Bob and Chris were here to help us along with this, but we did a great job. And Madison, Josh, I just can't, I can't name all the people who were involved in this, but it was everybody. So thank you all. This award belongs to all of us. Thank you. I, had, I said too much. Good job, guys. Thank you very much. All righty, that's it for the recognitions. We'll go back up um, to the dais. After the meeting, <laughs> all righty, everybody. Um, we've already done commission communications and administrative communications. Is there any last minute items? I, um, I have a comment, Commissioner Luke, uh, Vice Mayor Luke. Miss Mel did a great job recognizing everybody as a group. I just want to say Mel rocks. <laughs> yes, um, she does. This was her baby, and I believe she even held the hand of the county EDC. So thank you very much, Ms. Mel. Uh, you definitely put us on the map, not just regional, not just state, not just national, but this is international recognition. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. All righty. Um, do we have any final public comment for the meeting? No, we do not. It is now 417 and our commission meeting is adjourned. Good night. Bye-bye.